Good evening everyone. <clears throat> My name is Alan Cragg and I'm a member of the Stronghold Church in Weaverham. And this is my tes testimony of how I came to know God and discover his rescue plan of salvation for all of mankind through Jesus Christ. Now, my first recollection of, of God was hearing my mum talk about him one day and me asking, who is God? And my mum said she wasn't born again, but she said, well, God created the earth and everything in it and he created mankind to live on the earth and he lives up in heaven and we can talk to him. So being the only child um, <coughs> and my mum not being at home often because she used to go off and look after my gran, um, I talked to God because I was lonely at a lot of the time so I talked to God. Now when I was about nine years old God spoke to me and he said into my mind, but it was, you know, very real. He said, when you grow up, I've got a special job that I want you to do for me. So I always remember that because it was something completely different out of the unexpected to me. And, I, you know, I, I can still picture where I was when he spoke to me. And then probably something like a year later, he spoke to me again. And he said, when you grow up, I've got a special girl that I want you to marry. And I thought, OK, um, not really interested in girls at the moment, but maybe when I get a bit older, I might be. And then um, when I was about 11, I heard a voice again. And this voice said to me, if you had to choose which of your parents was to die and which one was to live, who would you choose? And I thought, well, I, you know, my dad works. He brings in all the money, um, you know, to pay the rent and for food. But my mum looks after me. She clothes me. And selfishly, I decided that it would be my dad that would die and my mum would live. And then about 12 months later, when I was 12... My dad died suddenly of an aneurysm on his way to work. And it was quite a shock, really. And for since that time, I felt guilty. I felt that it was me that have, had decided my dad's fate. You see, my mum had told me about God, but no one had told me that the devil talks to you as well. And I felt guilty for years and years until I discovered one day that it wasn't God that had spoken to me that time. It was actually the devil. And then years later, one night I was out and I met this girl who had bright blue eyes and they twinkled. And I instantly remember what God had spoken to me. And I knew from that moment that this was the girl for me. And this was Gloria, my wife. And I asked her out on a date and, you know, got to know her and eventually we got married. <laughs> but um, Gloria was a believer as well. And when we were courting, I used to, she spent all the time in church, to be honest. And on a Friday night, I used to pick her up from the church in choir after choir practice. And then Sunday nights, I used to pick her up from the church again after the Sunday night service. So she was believed, she believed from a young age and was very involved in the church. And um, she explained to me who Jesus was, because I'd always had a problem. I believed in God, but I could never understand who Jesus was and what part he played in it. But Gloria, um, she explained to me that God created uh, mankind to live side by side with him. But Adam, man Adam, separated himself from God. And this was rebellion against God. And since that time, God has strived to rescue mankind from their sinful ways and bring them back to himself. But God had to overcome the problem of sin. So he sent Jesus, his son, in the flesh to die on a cross 
as a blood sacrifice for sin. Thus, sin was dealt with through Jesus, but now, so now, anyone who believes that Jesus is the Son of God and he died on that cross for our sin is saved from God's judgment that is to come. Not only in this physical realm, this physical world, but also in the spiritual realm that rebelled against God as well. The Bible says that only the only way to God, the only way to escape God's judgment and eternal hell is to believe in Jesus and repent of your sin and accept him as your Lord and Saviour and gain eternal life with him in heaven. But remember, Jesus is coming back one day to regain full control of this planet Earth and all those who belong to him will come back with him with a new physical type body. But guess where he comes back to? It's Jerusalem. And that is why the Arab nations are trying to destroy Israel because the devil knows that if Israel does not exist, Jesus can't come back. Now, at that point, everything that I knew about God all fell into place and I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Saviour and I became a believer and we were very involved in the local parish church for a long, long time. Um, we were water baptised in a river, <laughs> which was quite cold. And then shortly after, we were baptised with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And in the 90s, God started to wake me up in the middle of the night. And he would give me a line of prophecy. And I would get up and write it down. And then he would give me another line of prophecy. And it went on and on. And it was some of it was like poetry but it was giving me information about things. And this went on for about 10 years, you know, on and off for about 10 years. And then in 2004, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And God spoke to me again and he said, is my word truth? And that challenged me. I knew what he was saying to me. He was saying, if you can take my word for your salvation, why can't you take it for healing? Because 1 Peter 2.24 says, by Jesus' stripes you were healed. You know, and I, it challenged me. And I had to consider it very seriously, you know. But I decided to stand on God's word. And to cut a long story short, because I haven't time tonight to give my healing testimony, because it, it's quite long and it's quite involved, but I didn't have any medication or operations, you know, after I got the cancer diagnosis. And because of that, um, eight months later, the specialist said, you know, seeing as you've not had any treatment, would you go for an MRI scan? So I agreed to that and I went for the scan and the result came back and it was 90% cancer on the right hand side of the prostate and 65% cancer on the left hand side of the prostate, which was... That's pretty bad. But it didn't faze me too much. I was still standing in faith, declaring God's word for healing because I got all the healing scriptures together and I used to speak them out three times a day, every day, month after month. So I got through that and here I am 16 years later, fit, well, you know, fine, healed. <clears throat> um, so... As I say, that, that was quite a long story. And God spoke to me the odd time after that. But then in 2018, we were on our way to the church, Gloria and I, and I stopped at a red light on the tra at the traffic lights in Hartford and God downloaded uh, information to me. Just in the fraction of a second, he downloaded a lot of information. That what he said was that there's going to be a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit and it's for the ordinary man, on man and woman, on the street. But he said that the devil had got wind of it 
and he'd panicked and he'd released every power, principality, every devil and demon that he's got is loosed on the earth, on mankind, especially believers. And his idea is that if he can take out as many believers, there won't be as many around to go with the flow, the power of the Holy Spirit that's coming. Uh, and then, coming up to date, on December the 25th, Christmas Day, this last year, 2019, at 6am in the morning, I had another encounter with God. And this one's amazing because I, I saw Jesus uh, hurrying up to me and he had a Bible in his hand and he said, Alan, Alan, look at this. I've got a plan I want to show you. And he came up to me and he was prodding me on the shoulder. He said, look, 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 look at my plan. Look what I've got for you. And he, he turned to Genesis 1.1 1, 1, and he put his finger on it and he read it and he said, in the beginning, God, he said, that's me, that's me. He said, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. He said, that's the spiritual realm and the physical realm. And he said, they're coming together now. And he said, be prepared to be interrupted. He said, carry on with your daily lives, plan your services in church, plan your daily lives, what you're going to do at work. Plan your holidays, but get ready for me to interrupt your life. <clears throat> he said, it's going to start off slowly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Going to start off slowly so that you'll get used to hearing my voice, so that you will do exactly what I tell you to do. Okay. But he said, be careful what you say. Because your words are going to carry the authority and the power of my Holy Spirit. He said it's going to be a time like Ananias and Zephira, where truth is absolute. He said we've got to speak the right words. Don't be careless in what we say. Just speak the truth. And he says when you bring someone to Christ, when you tell them the gospel and lead them to Christ, he said, and when you lay hands on the sick and they're healed miraculously, and when you cast out demons, he said, don't you dare take the credit for it. He said, it's got nothing to do with you. It's me working through you. He said, it's my glory, not yours. So he said, be careful. Don't get prideful. You know, we've got to be careful. And then in January 2020, Gloria, my wife, had a prophecy uh, to the prayer morning <clears throat> and Gloria prophesied that we need to get bigger wineskins, not small wineskins, but big wineskins, huge wineskins. <clears throat> and I went home and I started, so I started praying to God and I said, Lord, how do we get bigger wineskins? And God said, by getting rid of yourself. He said, get self from outside of you. He said, get rid of your pride and your arrogance and your gossiping and your bad thinking. He said, clean up yourself, get yourself out so more of me can come into you and fill you so that I can flow through you. Now, another time in the 90s, one of the things that God said to me was that prayer is your secret weapon. So church, we need to pray. We need to pray like we've never prayed before because God isn't going to do anything unless we pray to him for him to do something. So church, it's very important. We must get down on our knees now. This is the time we need to pray. This is the time we need to pray God down onto the earth in power and authority. In Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you for listening. And if anyone out there listening has any needs, any information, please contact the Stronghold Church. Thank you. Good night.